everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are back with part two of our review of the Google Glass, and I have them on once again. Uh, just a reminder, this cable here is so that I can show you what is on the Google Glass screen. Um, I need to use, oops, I need to use the, uh, and it's always very responsive to your voice, and that's often a bad thing. I'm um, using the cable to uh, transmit the video coming from the device through my computer to my video system here. It will be a little slower on your screen than uh, you'll see inside the glass if you were using it, so just, uh, just bear that in mind. So uh, let's just take a look at, a, at what I think is the killer feature. OK, Glass, record a video. And it will start recording video. And it's nice is that you have your hands free. You can uh, you know, look your, move your head around and get, uh, take a video. You can extend it just by tapping on this. And it will go beyond uh, the 10 seconds that it wants to record with initially. And um, that's pretty cool. You can hit the, hit the button here, share it with folks. You can download it through the same cable that's attached to my head right now uh, and throw it into a video editing software or do something like that. Uh, you can also do Google searches. OK, Glass, Google, who is the president of the United States? And this is really the same, and, you know, and it doesn't always get your voice correct here either. Um, but this is pretty much the same um, uh, process that you would run into if you were using the Google app on your smartphone. It's the same exact thing. It's just on your head versus on your phone. OK, Glass, Google, ctnewsjunkie.com. And they have added some web browsing capability to it. So uh, we get our Google search result here. We can then go ahead and view the website. Um, what's cool is they've added this augmented reality um, uh, web browsing interface to it. Uh, but again, this screen is tiny. I mean, it's, it looks big in your face, but it's still not as crisp nor, nor as clear as your uh, smartphone would be. But uh, you can do something cool here is put uh, two fingers on the glass and move your head around. And let's just wait for it to pop up here. And again, you can see how very beta this is. And I think really it's important to look at this, uh, this application or this device as a concept more than a product right now because it really is in, in a very beta format at the moment. But uh, you can zero in on a link here, and it's kind of like uh, aiming. <laughs> um, you have to then tap on that, and it'll load up the page and kind of keep going. And I, I, I can't even imagine anyone being out in public trying to browse a web page like this. It's really uh, just not this, you know, it, it looks cool, but it's, once you try to use it, it doesn't really make any sense. Now, one of the things the Google guy told me is that Glass is designed really to be kind of like your heads up display for your life, that um, you're going to be using this to, you know, look at emails and uh, things that are being sent to you right now, not things that you may want to go look at later. And um, let me just show you, let me just go scroll through my list here and find an email to um, give you a demonstration on. So when you do get an email, this one is from um, the Explorer community, uh, which is a uh, secret uh, a place for all of us glass people to meet up. Uh, and it just sent me a notification. So I can tap on the email here. Uh, and there's a thread of emails. These are all the three emails that came in that thread. I can read more. Uh, go through that. And I see somebody responded to one of the posts that I was uh, involved with there. And I can hit reply. This is a test of the email. Um, and if I do nothing, if I didn't tap right there, it would have just sent it out. So once you stop talking, it tends to want to do uh, things, assuming that you're OK with them. So uh, you know, you got to really get used to the interface. If it gets the, uh, the translation wrong, you're really in trouble, because it's going to just send that thing out there. Um, so you know, it's, it's OK. Um, you can scroll backwards here. We're going to show you the Model S app. Don't worry. You'll get to see that. It'll give me the weather where I'm currently at, uh, my calendar coming up. And if I had like a, a flight coming uh, up and it was in my Gmail, one of those confirmation emails, it would automatically tell me uh, where that flight was leaving from, what gate, uh, and uh, the, whether or not it was on time, which is all pretty cool information. But again, nothing you can't get on your smartphone. And you know, again, that's all information that you'll have there and not um, on your head walking around with this thing. And I think what you know, my, my biggest gripe with this thing is that, first of all, it costs a lot of money. Um, but secondly, it, it puts this layer up where you know, I'm, I'm not engaging with the world directly in many cases, that when I have something uh, popping up on my screen here, I'm looking up. And you saw, as I've done the video, that my eyes have not been on the camera because I've been looking in this little screen and trying to find my way around and things. And it really takes you out of the moment. And I think if people were having a conversation with me, uh, the fact that there's a camera on the front of my, <laughs> of my head uh, would concern some because it doesn't have a record button to tell you or light to let you know that it's recording. Uh, but also, it is rather intrusive. As you can see, it's got you know, a lot of hardware to it that uh, you know, you really, it, it, it's, it, it isn't something that just kind of goes in the background and hides. It's there. It's all the time. And I think if you were looking for a little notification device, 
you know, a well-designed watch or something else that is a little less intrusive might be the way to go. Uh, behind me is a uh, Apple Newton right underneath the uh, Sega Genesis. And, uh, you know, it's something that, uh, you know, it took a while to get that whole concept of using a tablet device out into the masses, but it, it replaced a piece of paper, it replaced something that we've all been accustomed to using. And, and now our iPads are slowly replacing our notebooks, our uh, newspapers, and everything else. Uh, but this is something that people aren't accustomed to using as an information device. We wear glasses, whether to correct our vision or to protect us from the sun, uh, but we've never worn glasses to uh, interact with our computers in the world. We don't wear computers on our head normally. Uh, so I, I just feel like from an adoption standpoint, uh, it's going to be really difficult. And I, I think the product will certainly improve. And in fact, this is a well-built product and it better be <laughs> for the money. But uh, considering it's really one of the first products that Google's made, it's very nice. But the concept, I think, is really the problem. Uh, where it will be successful, I, I really think will be in vertical markets like medical and maybe security and law enforcement, things where uh, you need to get information to people and you may want to keep their hands free to do other things. Um, you know, cell phones can, especially in the medical environment, are real germ magnets and you know, having something on your head that you can interact with with your voice uh, might be something cool. There are some cool apps coming out though and this is one here. This is one that you can uh, control your Tesla Model S and I actually have this connected to a Tesla. I wish it was mine. It's my father's but uh, nevertheless you can uh, connect to the car and it'll tell us that he's apparently out and about right now. He's got 102 miles left on his battery um, and it will actually give the location of the car. I won't do that just for privacy purposes but um, we can then go into the car. Uh, he has it locked right now but I could uh, honk the horn. I can unlock the doors. I could turn the climate system on, I could vent the sunroof, I can open the charge port, uh, and some other stuff too. So, uh, but again, this is not something that uh, you can't do on your smartphone already. In fact, Tesla has a really nice app that you can use to uh, be able to control the car and whatnot. So, you know, we'll see how this thing develops. I am probably not going to keep it past the 30 days. I, you know, I do feel the, uh, the, the video function is great. I mean, I, I really enjoyed uh, taking some videos of my little baby daughter uh, because I was able to get her to smile finally without um, getting distracted by a camera. But, you know, I can buy glasses that have cameras on them for considerably less than uh, these things will cost. So, you know, overall, I, I think if you're really into technology and it's something that you're not, you know, going to be self-conscious walking around in public in, you know, give it a shot uh, if, you're, if you get invited to purchase a pair at $1,500. But uh, for the rest of us, I, I think um, I'd like to see where wearable computing develops and uh, getting into some less intrusive things that do actually add to the experience. Like right now, this thing just doesn't add anything that my cell phone can't do. So I'm probably going to send these back, get my, uh, my money back after uh, I have my 30-day trial period here. Uh, but uh, your mileage may vary and others uh, may have differing opinions. And I want to hear from you. I'm probably going to keep these things for another week. So if you want me to demonstrate an app or have some, some things that you'd like to see in more detail, send me an email or leave a comment in my post and I will do that for you. And this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching.